I'm gonna love you. Hey guys, welcome back to Dan's Chess Lounge. Today I have an exciting game that I want to bring to you guys. It's about the classic attacker versus defender. You know, there's always a talk about which one would you rather be. Would you rather be an attacker or would you rather be a great defender? True, you need to be a little bit of both uh, to be a great player. But today's game is with Lubomir Lobojevic. He is one of the greatest attackers on the board. That's his thing. He's all about attack, attack, attack. And then he's playing against Off Anderson. And Anderson is known as one of the great uh, defenders on the board. So today we're going to have a really good battle here. So let's go ahead and dive in and see what transpired over the board. E4, C5. Okay, so you know we're going to have a Sicilian defense. Knight F3. E6. Now E6 prepares the D5 move. It uh it fights for control over the D5 and the F5 square. Uh, this was uh it's considered the Timonov system because Russian grandmaster Mark Timonov he spent a lot of time in developing lines and variations. Uh, one of the hallmarks of the E6 uh, Sicilian is that it's very flexible. It can transpose into many different lines and many different uh, types of Sicilians. D4. C takes D, Knight takes D. So we have an open Sicilian right here. And we know from our other lessons that uh, Black is going to try to utilize the semi-open C file to play on. And white is going to use the king side, the, the space that he has, uh, space advantage, and he's going to be attacking on the king side. Knight c6 is the move in the game, and that's the book move. But I just want to show you guys real fast that if uh, your opponent would play knight f6 and then e5 here, black can play queen a5 check, and that picks off the pawn on e5. So this is a well-known trap to most uh, Sicilian players, but sometimes when you get folks that don't really study the, the Sicilian, uh, they may fall right for this trap here. And when they do, you'll know exactly how to spring it on them. Let's go back to our game. Knight c6, knight c3, queen c7, that move there protects the d6 square because a lot of times white will play knight b5 uh, in the company with the queen on d1. Uh, it's a stronghold over the, the d6 square. So the queen moves out to try to protect that square there. Bishop e2. a6 is a, a preventative move to keep the knights off of b5. It's called a prophylactic move castle knight f6 bishop e3 bishop e7 both players are just developing here f4 is an aggressive move it strikes out in the center uh, it gives white the intentions of playing e5 on the next move and just basically creating more space and trying to cramp black even more d6 prevents that and also the queen being on c7 uh, is also like a little battery there that's going to stop the e5 push. Queen e1. The idea behind queen e1 is to eventually move the queen to the king side so it can get involved in white's attack and be in a more active square. Castle, queen g3. Bishop d7 uh, puts the bishop on a better square and it also makes room for the rooks to slide around on the back rank. <clears throat> E5. Now, E5 is an interesting move because it's a pawn sacrifice. Uh, Lubo did this so it could open up the position for him and make things a little bit more awkward for Black to, and uh, and, and for Black to continue with his plans is going to be uh, awkward, as you'll see. 
Anderson accepts the pawn sacrifice. Now Lubo pins with Bishop F4. Black plays Bishop D6 to block the pin. Rook A D1 is a indirect move that will put pressure on the bishop. Uh, he would like to play knight b3, and that will uh, reactivate the pins there. So Anderson tries to sidestep that by moving his queen back to b8. And his, his overall plan is to basically move his pieces out of the way and get out of all of these pins. So Lubo plays rook d3 with the idea of swinging his rook over to e3 to continue with the pins and put more pressure. If he would have played knight b3 right away, then a uh, black idea to just move all his pieces out of the way would work. He would just play bishop back to c7. Knight goes to c5 to hit the bishop. The bishop just swings over to c6. And then Lubo's, I mean, uh, Anderson's idea is just to play knight e8 to reinforce the bishop on c7. And then he would move his other knight to g6. So that's Black's idea, basically. It's just to move out of the way and get out of all these pins. So in the game... He played knight e8. If he would have played knight takes rook, uh, it wouldn't have worked out because then after bishop takes queen a7 and rook takes, uh, it wouldn't have worked out because he would have lost two pieces there for the rook. So he played knight e8 instead. Knight e4 hits the bishop. The bishop moves out the way. Rick goes over to c3, hitting the bishop again. So Anderson moves the knight to c6. Bishop takes bishop. Knight takes on d4. And then bishop d3. If Lubo would have played bishop takes queen, knight takes e2 check. King moves up because if he would have went to h1, he would have taken the queen with check. So the king goes to f2. Knight takes and then bishop takes. And that wouldn't have worked out for white because black is still up that sack pawn. And then the king is sitting on f2, not in the best position for him with all the pieces still on the board except for the queens. And then his attack is fizzled out. It's hard to launch that attack if the Queens is off the board. So that wouldn't have worked out for him. So Queen A7. Knight C5. Bishop B5 hits the light square bishop. Bishop E5 here attacks the undefended knight on D4. So the knight moves out the way to C6. And now you have a dagger. Bishop takes h7 check. Now, since most of Black's pieces is on the qu uh, queen side, this is a good time to go ahead and start the, the big attack here. So we, Lubo sacks his bishop with h7. King takes, and he plays rook f4. Now, what was interesting to see is that Lubo could have had a perpetual check right here. If he would have played bishop takes g, knight takes, and then, believe it or not, queen takes knight, king takes, rook g3 check, and then the rook would just go between h3 and g3. It would have just been a perpetual check. But he didn't play that, though, because Lubo is, a, is an aggressive player. He plays for the win, so he played rook f4 instead. F6 here hits the bishop, but it's also to give the king some luft here because uh, if you look at black's king, it's it's really exposed over there on the h-file, and it didn't really have anywhere to run to. So 
now he has that f7 square to go ahead and and try to run to uh as soon as white starts to check him on the h file as in the next move rick h4 king g8 queen g queen h3 with the idea of going to rook h8 following with with mate coming up so then knight d8 is a defensive move here for the, on the e6 square bishop d4 and then b6 is a good defensive move as well uh, because if he didn't play b6 here uh, he would have lost his queen to rook h8 check king f7 rook takes king takes knight takes e6 check and look at the queen the queen is under attack by the bishop but the king's in check king moves and he would have lost his queen there so b6 is a great defensive move there that stops that Knight takes E, Knight takes, Queen takes, check. Queen blocks with Queen F7. And that was also a good defensive move because if Anderson would have blocked with the Rook, then you have Rook H3. Followed up by Rook H8, check. King G7. Queen e4. Queen comes to e7 to try to stop the queen h7 checkmate. And that's all if he would have played the rook over to rook f7. So he couldn't have done that. He played the correct move. He played queen f7 instead to block. Now the queen drops back. It hits the rook on a8 and it also threatens checkmate on h7 so anderson plays g5 which initially looks like a good move here and then i just have to say that uh in the notes for this game it did say that anderson has spent up a great deal of time and he was in massive time pressure uh by this point so some of the moves was was forced he didn't he didn't have uh as much time as he would like uh but this move here, g5, it hits the rook on h4. And it also allows the queen to defend that h7 square. So you would think that that was a great move, but it, it's actually not the best move in this position here. He should have played queen a2. Now, it's not just to snag a measly pawn on a2. The idea is to give his king some some wiggle room that f7 square now his king can run to and also he can try to mount a little bit of a counter attack of his own by playing next queen b1 or a1 check and then followed up by queen f1 because don't forget that would be protected by the bishop on b5 so then basically it would force white's king out into the middle of the board and then who knows what would happen after that point black would have a, a counter attack going on and it would just be a good scrap it would be a good battle but instead he played g5 here and that allows rook h6 rook a7 the the idea behind that move there is to play rook e7 hitting the queen and then to follow that up with rook e1 check. And then again, he can drive the king out into the middle of the board. And then who knows what would happen after that. He would be able to get some type of counterattack going his own self. Because one thing, you just can't be a defensive player. You have to be a you have to actively defend. Uh, one of the coaches that I had a long time ago, he told me it's it's not enough to just defend uh, with, the, with your shield. You have to defend and strike at the same time. So now you have rook h3 threatening rook h8 followed by checkmate. g7 covers that h8 square, but that also loses the queen. Anderson would lose his queen with that move there. Rick 
F7. Uh, the idea behind that is that Anderson wants to continue with this idea of trying, even though he's going to lose his queen, he still wants to try to play rook e7, followed by rook e1 to dr try to drive the king out into the middle of the board. Who knows what would happen after that? And then, but Lubo stops all of that. He plays c4, and right here is where Anderson actually resigned because there was a uh, little hope for him after this move here. Uh, let me go ahead and show you how play could have continued after this. Bishop d7 was probably the best continuation after this here. But then that just leads to rook takes queen. Rook takes queen. d5 check. Rook f7 to block. Rook h8. King takes and then queen takes rook and then it's just too much for black to handle here. Uh, this is a one game for white. Let me show you uh, some more continuations. If Anderson would have taken the pawn, then he would have just lost his knight on e8. So that is not a good continuation there. If he would have played bishop a4, Lubo would just play b3, and then the bishop would go back to d7 anyway, and then that would be the first ending that I showed you. And then there was two more variations here. He could have played, he could have just ignored the c4 move that was attacking his bishop. And he could have played rook to e7, hitting the queen. Rook takes queen. If the rook takes, then you have queen d5 check. Rook comes back to block. And then you snap off that bishop. And then after that, you have threats of queen taking on g5 and then you have the rook to h8 that would be checkmate or if the knight takes then you have queen h7 check followed up by queen h8 checkmate so this game here was a good example of kind of the yin and yang you had a great attacking player going up against a great defender and you really notice that every single attack in this game that Lubo was throwing at Anderson Anderson was blocking it every single pin he was trying to defend the pin so it was a really good attacker versus defender matchup right here so all right guys hope you enjoyed that game thanks for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time